So what you're saying is, this is a happy medium bonus episode. Maybe. A bonus, but not like the kind of bonus you get when you do good at work. Like a bonus as in, like the disease came back. (laughs) Do people get bonuses anymore? I never, I never did, but I mean, I, yeah. I'm not normal. I got a bonus. I, I never worked for uh, um, places that gave bonuses. I think I got a Target gift card one time. I got bonuses every year for a while. Well, look at you. Look did at you get me. your Christmas bonus like in vacation and put in a pool? Oh, shoot. Hold on. I got uh, to break down your level. My levels, man. It's too low. Low. Well, you were like maxed out on 10. I was peaking. Peaking. You can also adjust it up here. Oh, can I? Oh, you can. I'm allowed to twist the knobs? Yes, you are. I just push the buttons. So I got this email from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, the 11th Annual Cutest Pet Contest. Okay. I'd like to submit my pet, and I have family that like to submit their pets. Here's the thing, though. You'll feel like shit if your pet doesn't win. Like, no one votes for your pet. What is politics? Like everyone gets their friends to vote for their pets. I don't have any friends. You're going to vote for my pet? That's it. I'm done, Jerry. <laughs> I mean, uh, my family will vote for their own pets. So then it's basically like a rejection. You get rejected. Like it's your kids, not your kids personally, but the cutest kid contest. And you're, you don't want to enter your kid and put yourself up for uh, some sort of like rejection. Uh, what do you get? What do you win? $100 gift card and some swag. I think that's lame, man. Why yeah. do we got it? Why do we got it? Uh, pets? Don't know. They're not gonna know. They got they lost a cute pet contest. No, they won't know at all. I don't. I mean, it's just like a self esteem thing. It's, it's gonna hurt your self esteem for the owner. Yeah, for the owner. Imagine you entered your pets, Jerry, and they got no votes. Would that make you feel bad? You'd be like, "Why did I do this? Yeah. Why did I set myself up for failure?" And then some fucking person's gonna have like. Like a million cousins and friends and shit. They're like normal and have like people in their lives unlike me. And they're going to vote for the little chihuahua. I mean, and it's the cutest pet. And they get to go, I have the cutest pet. It's like, no, you just have, a, you just know a lot of people. Right. Which is get to my other main point is basically you just got to know people for anything. For anything. I would think I was going to say that. You read my mind. I was just going to go to the nihilistic point of view that every contest is bullshit. Well, you're, in a, you're a musician, right? Yeah, you, know, you play the yeah. trombone. Yeah, you can you, you fiddle with the guitar. Yeah, you do these. We talked. We were talking before we start recording. Battle of the bands. How do you win battle of the bands? You have a hundred of your friends show up and vote for you, right? Yeah. Same thing with like stand up comedy. Or, or like you got like twenty social media. Your, or... Social media. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, to share and you got to be a hot chick to have. <laughs> yeah. Or a number of I don't know I don't know if it was all politically based or just like yeah. If it's not, then what do they judge you on? The songs that's so like subjective like what's a good song what's a good band what's a good what makes a good band the look well i did a battle of the bands i did a battle of the fucking bands in kentucky i didn't do one what do you mean you hosted i, ho- one? I judged judge? i judged one and a guy i was working with his brother was in the band and they were like a hard rock unique band i i mean i i listened to their cd um, I think it was given to me to play, which I couldn't do. I don't know if that was the intention. I think it was just like check out my, my brother's band. And it was cool. So they were in it, and then there was a bunch of like pop people in it. I had a lady from the newspaper, and I had the mayor. It's Mayfield, Kentucky. I'm not going to say anything bad, so I don't, I don't mind saying it. I was the only one that liked the fucking rock band. <laughs> you had some God people, like Christian people. I know this one, there's like some a pop group that did a cover of Umbrella, Rihanna, and they won. It was a solid performance. Like, okay, we're going like solid. Like, they sounded great. But basically, like, if you play the accordion and you're in Battle of the Fans, like, no one likes the accordion, you're not going to win. Yet, you bring 100 people, you might. So what I'm saying is, in my experience, again, nobody liked the music, so it wasn't fair. And then, yes, all those God people, like, all their parents came out of the woods to support them. I'm not trying to be mean. I don't remember who they were. I remember them covering Umbrella and being like, uh. And they won. 
They won Battle of the Bands. And it was like turning a fucking high school football. So, like, <laughs> no one was there. except Battle, <laughs> Battle of the Bands are good for beginner bands. And that's pretty much it. In yeah. my point of view. I think Battle of the Bands would be better if the bands actually fought each other. Because I do you, do you want to see, because it gets to a point, you go to one of those things, and for me, like, I need to be more familiar with the music to, uh, to instead of like, oh, I can just judge by like this 20 minute set, this band is great. So it basically, they go by like crowd support, don't they? People going, ah, and yeah. I mean, in my mind, the greatest artists, uh, comedians, uh, bands, they're loners. They're not like Mr. Popular. They're not like right. the Letterman, the football man. There's some guy, I mean, Trent Reznor, not popular. Marilyn Manson was a freak, but I guess they had friends still that like went to their shows early on. And, I, and I'll also <laughs> say that those type of shows are good for beginner bands because usually beginner bands are that age, high school or college, and they have like their friends or you know classmates, even parents and pa right, yeah. and family support. Right, it's a positive thing. It's hard to do that when you're on your own, twenty middle mid twenties, late twenties, living in a different city. Do you think though that all you, have, all you have is music? Do you think that that's misleading though? Because you do a show and your friends and family are there and they're supporting you because they love you and they care about you. But is that, and it's a positive experience. Any kind of performance I've ever done, I've hardly ever had anybody I know there. And that's mainly because I'm embarrassed and I don't want people to see me. I've done a couple improv shows where I've had had people there, but we're talking like two. I didn't have like 20 or 10 people there. So... I never had any kind of positive or negative experience I've ever had on stage was completely genuine. Now I have done open mics and I'm going to start doing open mics again. But I noticed that like the comedians with all their friends there are the ones that get the reaction. And if you're like some nobody people, they're jaded comedians. They've heard all the jokes. They know it. Oh, he went that way. He went that way. I get it. So anyway, that's not really a genuine reaction, but this positive reaction, is that like everyone gets a trophy kind of thing? Because would you is that is that that's not, that's not realistic i mean you may be good but your parents aren't going to be like that sucks i mean some might but is it better to play for a honest genuine crowd and whatever reaction you get is what you deserve versus some yeah dude yeah we let, let's part let's go to waffle house now you know dude i gotta take a shit man <laughs> go ahead like answer that and then i'll come back <laughs> no go dude go just go no <laughs> What were you saying? I'm back for my shit now. We had to pause the recording. I kept recording in real time. Oh, so you heard all that? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like an exorcism. Yeah, it sounds like something got lodged in the pipes. Just a lot of chili and fruit and good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what you have before you go out into the public where there's no restrooms. Ooh. So, uh, not to be gross or crass, but gross. I was gonna say crass, and then I decided to say gross. And gross is a cool word. Gross. That's the name of my new band. Gross. The gross yeah. Brothers. Did you get the new Gross album? Oh yeah, dude, it was <laughs> killer. Do people even talk like that anymore? Killer. Just yeah, dude. Maybe like killer. She's gonna blackmail me, but not like that's killer. I feel like the the impression I just did was like dated. It was a Spicoli. It was like Bill and Ted. Yeah. They're making a new Bill and Ted movie. It's not outdated. It's gonna be sad. It's gonna be sad. They have kids. They have a lot. They made. They had a great life. They go back in time a couple of times. They met George Carlin. What? 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 Resurrection or reboot has been like a success in your eyes? What? Like uh, artistically or financially? Because a few of them financially. Artistically, mm -hmm. I'd have to think. I'd really have to think, man. What I think is a good reboot. Shit. The newest Halloween wasn't bad. Oh yeah. That's actually but that is that a reboot? Do you I don't know. Do you get that though? Yeah, like, it was a reboot because none was, of the other Halloweens mattered but except that's, what the first I, that's one. a reboot. Yeah, that's yeah. That was Mr. Danny McBride. He wrote he co wrote the script. Yeah, I actually I like that one. That's a good that's a good example right there. And I don't know how they're gonna keep doing it. 
I mean, I'll tell you what was a shitty reboot or remake was Nightmare on Elm Street like several years ago. Yeah, I never saw it. They, I heard it was terrible. You cannot recreate Freddy Krueger. Yeah. That's like saying, yeah, we're going to recreate Halloween, but you know but, Michael, but Michael Myers is, is going to wear like a pink <laughs> mask. Well, that's the thing. Michael Myers and Jason, you can have anybody play him, but Freddy or Robert England, was, you can't like duplicate that. Right. But... Uh, other reboots that I think are are good. They don't even have to be reboots like Resurrections. So you like Bill and Ted. That's not a reboot. That's no, just going to be. A that's like bringing something back, like so, like a sequel, like forty years later. I call those resurrections. I saw a sequels. trailer. I saw a trailer for the new Star Wars. The final. It says it's the final one, and I'm not up on my Star Wars lore, but don't they have several more movies to come? Or are they all spinoffs? The trailer is like one of those little fucking. Uh, crafts that like darth vader flew i mean i these nerds if they're if any listening i think gonna, gonna no, kill I'm, up, me. I'm up on star wars i think it's it's carrie it's, fisher's in it they show carrie fisher in it well, like she's i know she's dead i'm just saying it's like her daughter or something and she takes a lightsaber know. and attacks it now it's like the whole trailer it's fucking badass is that the game of thrones guys no it's good for them if no, they did that. that's jj jj no this <laughs> so so the stories the episodes that they call them Han Solo's dead. Spoiler. They're all based around one story, like the Skywalker story. Uh huh. Like you have the 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 original three, yeah, which is based around Luke. Then the other ones, which were prequels, and that was based around Darth Vader, Anakin, Anakin yeah. which is Skywalker, yeah. And then the last three, it's all mystery. Like, wasn't there a Han Solo? Like, well, one, Luke right? was in the last one, but he wasn't in the first one. So it's based around the the Skywalker lore or like the story, family. the story, yeah. pretty much. So uh, everything I am hearing that like this is the last of all of those characters. Wow! So they say it looks fucking epic. The last one was terrible, though. Was that the solo one? Or the no, one? the the last one, like the last episode. I heard Disney's ruining it. Is that true? Since Lucas sold it to Disney, depends who you ask. I'm asking you. My personal take on it. Who else am I asking? You go online was, and talk to some angry people. The thing about me is, I would. I was a late Star Wars watcher. I was obsessed. So with I'm the not early like ones. attached. I'm not attached to them like a yeah. lot of people are, like from their youth. And I think that's why it's pissing a lot of people off. Or just, mm-hmm. which is basically this day and age. Anything you, the story you extend nowadays is all terrible because they change it or a character is different or they change the gender or change the race because oh that's not who I grew up with right so well it's not the 80s anymore right yeah. obviously you get a lot of that <laughs> just the the story the last one it just it didn't feel like Star Wars it was very different yeah and I only watched it once so Wait, you watched them multiple times I might need to go back and watch it well I watched it in the theaters let me ask you something do you think people would be less angry like, okay, so people have lost their minds over that Ghostbusters movie with the female cast. And I think people were like, why would you make such big changes to a, a movie, a franchise? I've seen, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I've seen, like, the ending of it. It seems like it's a, its own universe, correct? They have, like, cameos from the Ghostbusters, but it's its own universe. Like, it's not whatever Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd did in the 80s and late 80s. That that does not happen. Yes, yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. That's what I thought, too, which it can piss people off as well. Right? I think. Because they build it as 34 years ago, Peter Venkman, all this shit. And it's like. Oh, no, no, no. In this one. In the, in the, they're their in, own people, in the though. The latest female version. Yeah. That's what you call it. It, it was. They were in. Like, like they were the um, the, the three actors were in it from from the original but right they, but they were different characters right exactly like dean Aykroyd was a cab driver right yeah but but uh, they did at the end by the hook and ladder building okay and then they made it that was there right like, was, that was almost like a credit ernie hudson was like leslie jones's dad right yeah and he had she had the she got the car right the yeah. mobile and then he started yelling at her at the end right yeah and then kate mckinnon sigourney weaver was like her mentor kind of i saw that at the end yeah but they were their own people, so right. they weren't. They're they that's were, a reboot that you basically bring something back. You you bring something back now. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. 
that's not a reboot. That's a continuation. Where I'm going with this is if they just continue that Ghostbusters movie, this is just one example, as all those girls, as those guys as daughters, which is what I thought would be a good idea and would people wouldn't get as mad, continuations, not reboot. Bill and Ted, a continuation. Bring it back. You know what I mean? Not the Alien movies, continuations. Not, I think let's do it again. I think they're doing that with the next Ghostbusters. Continuation? Yeah, I think. I don't know. Ne- like the ne- Everything like, I've heard. Like next generation, like don't just erase the past because it's like this is like a group of people's. It's like we want the millennials to have their own Ghostbusters or whatever kind of bullshit or whatever. You know, you know why? It's, it's like, but they can keep it keep it real though. Like you, you know, know what why? I mean? Why? What's what's the root of everything? Money. Money. Well, Dan Aykroyd forced it down everybody's throat. I heard. Dan, Ac- it was Dan Aykroyd's baby. Harold Ramis died, and I'm not saying Harold was against it, but Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis are like the creators, right? And Bill Murray would refuse to do an actual because there was talk for years of them doing a third one. Those guys, right? Now Harold's dead, so I don't know what they're going to do. God rest his soul. I loved Harold Ramis, great comedy writer. Um, Animal House, Caddyshack. I mean, the guy's got great credits. Ghostbusters, but uh, so Bill wouldn't do it. But then Bill will be in a, in a fucking female movie as some weird cameo. Like I don't get it. And then I heard there he agreed to do it. Uh, this, hypothetical Ghostbusters film. This was back in 2012 when I was talking to my friends about this. He agreed to do it if he died in the first 30 minutes. Hmm. And then, and then, like, I see Dan Aykroyd saying that he just won't do it. He doesn't want to do it. But he'll be in some fucking... And I'm not saying... I'm not disparaging the film, but you'll be in a cameo of some weird reboot of it? And I thought... Like, why, I thought I don't they're all it. involved in the next one, aren't they? Apparently like so. Like, Ivan uh, Reitman's uh, son uh, is doing apparently, it. Apparently so. Apparently so. So what changed? <laughs> What changed? I don't know. Money. I, uh, okay, here's... Bill can do whatever he wants. Bill's what got enough money. Here's what I was thinking. Okay. And he's got street cred as a real actor. Reboots versus... <clears throat> resur- Res- resurrections. Erection. <laughs> now, obviously, you have to pay just to use the title. Now, do you have to pay extra to use the character Peter Vankman? I would say Yes. Hmm. So a, when you bring a, back, is it is it per character? Because if you bring back three or four or five, six, but seven Dan Aykroyd, characters, Dan Aykroyd was the crea- was like the creator, so that's his say. I guess I don't know. I'm just I'm I just think the, they in, in, to, gen, in general reboots reboots versus the continuation. It depends on who owns the characters. Because I know Rob Zombie wanted to do his Devil's Rejects movie for a while, but Universal owned the characters, so it's like you don't own them, you it, sell them. It's probably not only that, but when you do that, the continuation, you have to pay those actors, the older actors, and they probably want millions upon millions upon millions, and you can, or you can, you can cast these younger, even though the, the the new ghost, the female Ghostbusters weren't young, they were younger, but they were still as young as the a, guys they were, were still A listers, as young as the guys were in the, but in they were still established A listers, so who, that's kind of different than doing Bill like Murray a, and Dan Aykroyd, no, like Kristen Wiig and. They're not. Well, she's an A-lister. Melissa McCarthy's an A-lister. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're A-lister. They weren't sure. like. You're right. They're no, but they're not nobodies. They're big names. It's not like they like. I'm trying to think of another example. I don't know why this this popped in my head. Like the Power Rangers reboot, because mm-hmm. I'm just thinking kids, like 18, 19 year olds. You don't have to pay them anything. True. You know. True. True. Very true. Very very true. So that could be the reason for reboots. Like, there's not a lot of creativity or story involved. It's just. You're selling the. Na- it's almost like, it's almost like bands. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tour again as Def Leppard, but we can't afford the whole band. We can just afford the singer. It's like a, a, a the songs reboot. are there. Yeah. The the but the names there. Yeah. The band's rebooted. Right. Yeah. Should I say turn that down? Ask to turn it down. Ma'am. It's fucking loud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll be polite. Okay, that's fine. She turned it down. There, were, do you remember the skit? Meatloaf. No, mom, meatloaf. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes and no. The skit that we did. Oh, she came down. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, like, yeah. I had that idea when we we're doing reads. Yeah. That that that'll be fun. Mom, get the fuck out of here. And she doesn't have to participate, but it'd be uh, funny. Mom! I'd rather not. I'd rather not. But in like your, uh, like the ads for, I love that we're doing this on record. 
we're doing this like you're doing like a, an ad for either like a, a very adult like either like a le- erection pill or something or like something that like shows that how you have class and you have this is what i use i use i have three lamborghinis and i i i recommend this mom <laughs> don't come down here anyway yeah like uh like it's just like drastic like message and then the guy's like living with his mom. <laughs> right. Or or you go back to the follow your dreams. Fuck everybody else. Follow your dreams. Your mom doesn't like it, fuck her. You like this, fuck you. This and that. What? Mom, I'm doing a speech. <laughs> Do you like that guy? Gary V? No. But then, because he's a lot in one, like I don't like that part of him. He's a lot in one, is because because he's because his target audience is like young ki- kids, confused people. But he's also a, like a media, or no, 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 like his history, like he invests in social media companies before, like the startups, and so like in terms of, like a businessman, mm-hmm. I kind of like his take. Uh, why like what's important why snapchat died or myspace died like something like that like his his takes on things but not like a, on inspirational shit i don't believe in that my question for gary is how did he follow his dreams what steps did he take i think he was always a an entrepreneur like he started a wine an he started entrepreneur? He's, that's a trust fund baby job. he start he started one of the first uh wine Online how did he do that? E-commerce. Where did he get his money from? How did he follow know. his dreams and get his money? It was handed to him by his fucking Maybe that'll parents. be my second episode. Here, here's how you follow your dreams is get fucking money. Have a fucking uh, boatload of money and your dreams will come true. Simple as that. Could just be a big loan. He got money from his family. He was born into wealth. And that's fine. Do you but know don't that? Tell- yeah, you- I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, he's getting called out on it now. Oh. He made some comment about having a hundred grand. Actually, I'm gonna research that just in case I'm wrong, but I'm pretty goddamn sure it's. And it's right. a bonus episode. It was a bonus, so we could never air. <laughs> Gary V. Child privilege. Gary V. Rich. Born rich. Born to spend. This is a this is a great radio. It was a bonus episode, like you said. So that you're telling me I, I don't have to edit this. <clears throat> That's the disclaimer, an unedited version of us. All right. He's a New York Times best-selling author, so he earned that. He didn't like, he can't pay people to buy his books. Uh, <laughs> um, I uh, He's worth $160 million, so. Are you being proven wrong? No, I just, uh, I know he came from a rich family. Here, let me read his fucking Wikipedia then. Wikipedia never lies. It helps you write college exams. Let's see. Uh, he's uh, Belarusian and uh, internet personality and uh, wine critic. Expanded his family's wine business. Family's wine business. That doesn't make him rich, though. He expanded it. So they're poor. They're like, you're right. Oh, we got the vineyard. Not you're right. I have said that. Go speak to people that's and have he, a bar of that's, wine. That's what he did. Why am I talking like an Italian person? <laughs> Best known for his work in digital marketing, social media, chairman, blah, 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 blah. Could kill someone and get away with it, probably. Uh, Soviet Union. Ah, crush the Americans. Came here in 78, blah, blah, blah. Lived in Queens, blah, blah, blah. I'm walking here. He operated a lemonade stand, earned thousands of dollars on weekends trading baseball cards. So he's a born hustler. At age 14, he joined his family's retail wine business. So I don't know. I saw some thread where he was being called out where he's like, all I had was a hundred grand. And it's like, well, no one ever has a hundred grand. Kind of like Trump saying, all I got was a million dollar loan for my dad. You know? <laughs> so you, you, you should not have spit that. No, I stand say. by it still. Because because you own a wine business doesn't make you rich. But you can sit there and go follow your dreams and do everything and everything. But like, if you like uh, parents like are uh, addicts and like you have no money and you're on government assistance, like your options are limited. Like he's not as realistic as yeah. I, my parents had a business that I could run and make money off of and basically uh, give me money and shit. And I was born in a great neighborhood. Like someone born in the inner city, like 
Does what he says apply to them? Just just quit everything. I'm gonna, just quit everything I'm and go to Hollywood. Post this and tag Gary Vee and see if he responds. I hope he does. He was responding to these people. Yeah. He was. I like that I like that part of him. What responding to people? Yeah, I I, I feel like a lot of it's bullshit, but a lot of it's genuine. I shouldn't say bullshit. I feel like the message he sends out it just doesn't work. It, for for everything. It, you can't just exactly. say you can't say fuck you can't say it, fuck you. It, it applies to the person who it applies to a small percentage of people who listen to it. There's other people that doesn't apply to, and that's not smart to do. I mean, follow your dreams. That's so cliche. I mean, I think there's a time in your life where you have like you have that option to like run away and go do something. And depending on what happens, like that gets limited. But also, like you kind of like take care of yourself, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I ideally you take care of yourself doing what you want to do. That's why you go to school. That's why you do this. That's why you do that. I mean, I saw a thing where he said that schools fail entrepreneurs. It was like a meme. He, schools fail entrepreneurs, and it's like okay, so school is bad. I can like, see not that. everybody's an entrepreneur though. I like, can see that though. So you can't it does. You, so condemn for the two percent of people that applies to you're going to condemn school. To the other people listening, it depends. It depends what you want to do. If you're a lawyer, you no, know, yeah, you got, you got to go to school. You want to be a doctor, you got to go to school. What if you want to have run a wine vineyard that your parents like? Uh, I think owned? No, I, <laughs> I believe in that. Even before, I, that, that's my that's my views. Even before I just heard that, like if you if you want to do a business or or marketing or something, you don't need school. What you need money? You need real life experience. You not need real, money? No, not necessarily. You need money? Not you need, to get hired somewhere. To run your own business, you need money. Well, to no, just to get a job. Oh, then you yeah. work your way up. I painfully learned that degrees don't mean shit anymore. A degree, they, a, gr- a degree just means that they have to pay you more, pretty much. It, so it, it, they don't want to. They it, I, pay. I feel like it, not so much anymore, but it did. It means something, but not, not that. Oh, you excelled in this. No, it just it's, it showed you have commitment. It's like what we were talking about earlier. Earlier, if, you got a degree, check. It's like a check checklist. Well, as an a, a, an employer, right? If from an employer's point of view, you're looking. Okay, this this person finish their court their um degree bachelors of arts right so they have determination and, yeah. and they're in debt they and need this job they need this job they need this job so bad that's I'm gonna pretty low, much why i low ball them <laughs> for for some if not most jobs we'll but, say there are a lot of professions that do need schooling well, for sure in the I'm old days if that. you got a degree it like puts you above everybody but not everyone has degrees not everyone but like College isn't like some hoity-toity, not everyone can go now. Anybody can go to college. And I know that's like, uh, well, it's true. I'm not trying to piss anybody off because I know student loans are t- a touchy subject. But anybody can go to college. You go into debt, but you can go to college. You just, you just got to like uh, not, not have F, straight Fs. That's why people need to just, instead of do that, if you don't have a goal, then just go learn a trade. Honestly, yes. Because that ain't never going out of style. No. It's going to come more in style. Yeah. Honestly, like that's good, honest work, and you make good money. Joke's gonna be on us in a couple of years, or five, ten. I don't know. That's when, why you get the side hustles. That's why you do. You do, you know you pick up the skills you can, and you give people what they want. What is it? What is there a need for? My problem is, is I never, <laughs> I never supplied a need. There was no need for whatever I gave in my careers. There's always gonna be a need for. Air conditioners and heaters to be fixed. Plumbers and plumbers always. IT guys. Uh, yeah, to an extent. Well, you know, it, it, IT it, it changes. But just, still, though, like ten years from now, you'll need someone to fucking put in your system at your office. And, yeah. I mean that. Uh, auto mechanics, cars are changing, so yeah. you got to like, you know, it's all computerized. I want to learn all those skills. Hell, be a hell of a summer. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> But here's where I'm going to circle back and where I'm going to side with Gary. I don't want to do any of that shit. And it's not because, it's just because I'm not interested. What I'm interested in is shit that doesn't make money. That's the problem. So if I was sitting there talking to Gary right now, because I, I have aspirations of, of being an actor or a comedian, and I've worked in radio still for about a couple more days. Um so he told me to like to give up everything I have, which is pretty much nothing at this point, and then like move to one of the cities where it's like popular at, or like just sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. 
but there's like a 98% chance, 99.9% chance that at best acting or comedian or whatever the fuck would be some sort of high, side hustle. It'd be a, a weekend gig or a night job or I'd go to Indiana and do a show or whatever. Ideally, best case scenario, I do a, I'm in some theater group or whatever the fuck. I still need that fucking trade job so I can have the house and the car and buy the drugs. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a very expensive. Uh, that's not even going to be a habit. Very so, expensive. Um, <laughs> so vice, we'll say. Would Gary say you should probably get a job to stabilize yourself, and then in, in your nighttime hours, since you're a single guy in your weekends, go do all the fun shit like we're doing right now? Or would he say sacrifice everything and just do this? That's reckless, man. That's reckless. Now, is he responsible, or is the moron that hears him that runs out on his mortgage to go to, I know we're saying L.A. a lot, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know if I said this on, what is this called? It's not on air, on record, on tape, on, not tape, on uh, on digital. Anyway, I don't know if I said this while we were recording. <laughs> Bonus episode, folks. Yeah. Um, fuck, no, I lost my train of thought. Oh, his demographic is 16 to 23-year-olds, probably. Idealistic people. Or just people you are could, starting out. Yeah. Maybe you're trying to figure out their lives. Shit, I'm 34, and I'm still trying to figure out my life. That's the joke. My second phase. That's the my fu- second phase. That's I, the I've, fucking joke, dude, is that you like go, oh, yeah, you know, I'm 20, so I'm going to like run around and do all this crazy shit, and then by the time I'm 30, it's like, no, you're still going to be doing the same shit. Or you like, just, or you just, you, you, I think what people tend to not realize younger people is the goals you set and the paths you take most of the time once you get there it depends what it is it's like okay i did it i'm here it could be a year it could be two it could be three it could be five it could be ten but at some point it's like okay what's next i'm ready for something else so then it just starts all over again but it's harder cuz you have that debt or mortgage or cars kids but the but the it's not an issue but the same like dream or self fulfillment is still going to be there or could still be there i'm not saying some people get their jobs and that's what they do the rest of their lives are they happy though are they miserable do they wish they were doing Depends some what's sort important of, to them some, yeah exactly I mean, I think people like us, and I mean, people who are interested in the stuff we're interested in, no matter what we end up doing, I think we're going to make time for these kind of things. And you know what? If that becomes my main gig, then great. But I've been beaten up enough to know how hard it really is. And to have that guy tell people, like, all you got to do is just give up everything. All you got to do is try. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. It's kind of reckless. I mean, in a way, I mean, it depends how you how you. Because what happens it if it don't work out? You go back to Gary and go, "Oh, well, I'm going back to my vineyard. Fuck off." It depends. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it depends how much sacrifice is involved. If it's just the, if it's just, uh, you know what matters? Ability. How does Gary know these people have the ability to do what they want to do? So someone doesn't know how to drive a car. Go just go drive it. Just go drive it. Just drive it. Go make excuses. I don't know how, Gary. I've always wanted to, but I don't know how. Just, just figure, fucking drive it. Uh, th- Get on the highway and I drive. See, I see the positive in that. It just depends what it is. I'm like, being stupid. I know. Like <laughs> if, like, let's just let's just take someone like you. I'm not saying you, for example, a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I could go on for days. Chronic masturbator. <laughs> no, like someone who always wanted to, <laughs> to be a, uh, like a comedian, but they work as a banker, whatever. I was never a banker. I'm just. That's why I'm not saying you, but someone. Oh. But. It could just be that push to like just go to an open mic night, join that improv group. Just that's that's why I think that's more of a positive thing. Just just go do it if it's not involving sacrificing everything. That's what he does though. He's he's going on like you know. Here, here's here's an example. Okay, I actually am very well versed in Gary V. Possibly, so he made this video, and he's like, I'm so sad because cliche you told me don't put these fucking memes up on the facebook page oh i hate monday i hate monday he's like that's so sad 
Everybody basically lives for the weekend. Everybody lives for the weekend. Everybody hates five days out of the week. They are miserable. And then two days, they're happy. Then Sunday night, oh, my God, my life sucks again. Like, you shouldn't live like that. Sunday night, I'm like a tiger. I can't wait to go to work. It's like, because you have your fucking dream, dude. Like, sorry, people have shitty jobs. Like, is, is, they're, they're, they're failing at life because they have jobs they don't like because they look forward to the weekends where they have free time? Like, I get what he's saying, but it's too broad, man. It's too fucking broad. So I'm pissed off I got to go to work Monday. Change everything. It's just easy to give advice like that, too. I'm just saying, like, no, I want to see someone go, Gary, Gary, I, I moved to fucking Hollywood, and they turned me out like a whore, Gary. It didn't work out, Gary. Like, what's he going to say? Don't give up. Just do it. Gary, I have to, like, blow the studio executive to get a role. Follow your dreams. You can make excuses. <laughs> you're going to be 80. You're going to be wishing you blew the studio executive. You could have got that big part as the background guy. But no. No, go to your stupid job. I can't. I don't know how to respond to that. I'd be ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> and the happy medium of it is, I can see a point in a lot of things he says, and some things I don't. Here's my. Here, and there is, it's, it's a big generalization because who's he talking to? Is he talking to me? He's talking to you. He's talking to some twenty-something-year-old who has you know just getting out of school. I'll do pros and cons real quick. I'll start with cons. I'm always stronger with cons. <clears throat> Sorry, this is fucking CPAP, man. <clears throat> it's like killing my allergies. Cons is he's rich and privileged and doesn't know what it's like to be a normal person. So he's giving normal people advice. That's a con. Con is he's telling people to follow their dreams, not having any idea what their abilities are. Pro. I'll go, I'm already done with cons. Pro. He's telling young people to have ambition. Pro, like you said, the guy who's working at a bank who's just got that hole inside him like we talked about. He wants to like do more. Yes, go to the open mic night. Sign up for an improv class. Just go, even just go watch somebody. They're just like nine to five. And yes, like he's talking about Monday through Friday, you're miserable, but you need somebody to tell you like, Hey, you know, do what you want. I mean, I guess, Some I guess, people, yeah. yeah, I guess. So, so I, I hope he, I, I'm not trying to shit on the guy. I just think like he makes life seem so easy and it's not. And it's not fair. He doesn't have some rags or riches story. I'd rather hear like some homeless guy who became some Fortune 500 guy talk like that. That would mean more to me. Like Pursuit of Happiness guy. Have you seen that movie with Will Smith? That, yeah. That's a true. That's a real guy. I want to hear him his speech. I actually watched, I saw like a documentary on that before the movie. My God, dude, he was fucking homeless, like working on Wall Street. Had a kid he was taking care of. That's a guy I want to tell me what to do with my life, not Mr. Wine Vineyard, dude. I don't know. I feel like the best group of people or person to take advice from. Your parents. <laughs> no. Your grandparents. Or someone who's lived it. To tell you what's important. Because you don't really learn it until. Too late. till the end of the. Yeah. Or just the, the end of your journey. Well, I've been studying in school, oh, basically. So your end of your. I don't want to say end of your life. I don't want to make it morbid, but. Going through all this stuff, like what's important? Is, is money important? Is time with your family important? Is going out to, you know, sporting events, concerts, uh, any type of life? Is that important? Going for the job, making a career for yourself, is it like what's the most important thing when it's all said and done? Unfortunately, you don't figure that out till it's over. That's why. I like to. I think regrets. I don't think. I don't. I don't care what you do. No matter what you do, you're gonna have regrets. Yeah, you can't do everything. Even if you do what you want to do, you go. I should have done it this way. I should have done it that way. You can't do. Yeah, you can't. Or do I should have quit. Or I should have. You, you know. You can't go out and work a hundred hours a week, make a shit ton of money, do all this stuff, then have a family, spend quality time with your kids, watch them grow up, uh, and you can't travel. You can't do all that. There's just not enough time in the day. It just depends on what kind of life you live. Are you, do you live the hardcore family life? you live uh, the entrepreneurial life? you live the entertainer life where you're, like, sleeping on someone's couch? I mean, it just it depends. And what works for you at one point in your life might not work for you at another point. 
And there's a time in your life maybe you would be like eating SpaghettiOs on someone's futon. Now it's like, no, man, I need shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Or maybe you can do all that in one life. I, I'm sure you can. What, what I'm studying in school is that basically by the time you're old, you, you achieve wisdom or you basically not the whole point of life, but what is important. Basically, being in the moment and all that stuff and what's happening right now. And either you do that or you become regretful. Like, I wasted my life. There's like two ways to go about it. And there's different stages of development. And there's different milestones as you get older. And I think no matter what you do as an occupation or what you do with your life, you got to reach those milestones as far of like emotional development. As part of life, you know, I don't want to sit there and like go through my school thing, but I think as long as you hit those milestones and I think you'll be okay. As long as you develop like what you're supposed to develop, when you don't hit those milestones and you become bitter and jaded and antisocial and frustrated and isolated, you know what I mean? Versus evolving and becoming socially interested and, you know what I'm saying? Uh, evolving, like learning more. Like that's, I think that's the key to everything. I'm not saying school, but whatever you say, like, I don't need to learn anything else. Like you're done. You need to keep like, you don't care what you're interested in. You need to keep learning about it. And I think that's been a problem with a lot of people, including myself is like, yeah, I know it. Not, I know it all, but everything's always changing. And if you know everything about whatever you're into, then learn about something else. Right. You can never know too much. I know that. Like, I wish I would. That's one thing I wish. I, here's my regret: is I wish I would have took school more seriously. And I'm not talking about high school. I mean, like, oh god, fuck school, rebel. You know, got a leather jacket on, and, like punching the locker. And I've been talking more about college again, so there's no lockers. But man, some of those are some really interesting classes. And I, I mean, I bet I could have had like a really actually interesting time if I wasn't so like focused on like trying to cut. <laughs> what does that get you in life? If you take like one interesting class. It's fun for six months, but if if the goal isn't is, unless you want to get a job, it that said interesting. What's the point? I've had, You're spending a shit ton of money to have I, I, as a college kid. It's like, yeah, I do want to take interesting classes, but in terms of like, if your goal is to get out of college and I don't know. You want to be an accountant. Let's well, you got to take you like, got to you got to take what you're going to major in, and then you got to take electives. I understand, and then you can take some foo foo shit. You know what I right. mean? I mean, I took a couple. I took an interesting history class that was real history, not Disney history. Well, you know what I mean? Like how shit really happened that we don't really know. And about. Still, probably wasn't real. Probably, you probably wouldn't be able to teach it. In I'm just saying shit like that. Like, I I wish I would have like tried more and learned more. And then there were some classes, English classes, where we read like some really interesting books. And I was just trying to get out of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was like, yeah, I'm young, party. It's like that's so cliche, but it's like, dude, like you could have embedded yourself somehow. Who knows if that could have led to some other interest? But ooh, ooh, bad, yeah, yeah. keg parties. Like, but where does that get you? It you become some, a lot. You're some forty year old loser who never leaves the college town. <laughs> you're you're, all, you're always wanting to give the 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 ten year back self advice. Oh god, like my last some, ten years, I'm going over like a fine tooth comb. I'm sure your forty year old self's going to give you advice right now. Forty whatever you are, forty three. I'm not forty three. No, ten years from now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey now, you're an all star. I I think though like as far as like in the old days your 20s were a time to like have your fun then by the time you're 30 you have a family and then you have a job and all that shit and then 40s the kids get older and then you expand on your job and then 50s and 60s and then like your life's over it's like people don't like I'm noticing in like all these classes I'm taking are it's like it never stops. It never stops. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, it never stops. There's not an easy... There's a stigma, though, where it's like a young people's game. There's, it's not. There's not an easy decade. There's not an easy age, I don't think. I think there, there might be an easy age, but maybe like... Well, I think whatever. when you're young, if you're in entertainment especially, it's easier to take off because when you're young, you're more attractive and... You don't make any money. Yeah, but w- w- I, I don't know. Like, the goals always change. Everything changes. Things might be different and better in one aspect, but then the other aspect, it's not. 
times change too. Like yeah, yeah, the saying? times yeah. change. Well, I mean, it's it's a cliche. It's not news. It's not like we're reporting anything or not reporting, but just talking about anything groundbreaking. But it's the, you know, um, when you're young, you have time and health, but no money. Exactly. But then when you're older, you have all you know. You could have a lot of money, have it all figured out, but then you don't have your health or time, or mm-hmm. you have more time, but you don't have your health. You ever feel like you're? I, I, well, I don't know about you, but. I, I'd have a complex where I feel like I'm missing out on shit. It's like, oh, God, the, all this stuff's happening. It's like... You and every other person that has social media. That's what it is. Yeah. You, you see this You see this shit. Everyone's having these rock star lives, and it's like, God, I'm a loser. And I, I'm, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm 33, man, 34. And uh, that, that's pretty sad that I, I, I get sucked into that shit. Quit it. Quit social media. Okay, well... I don't know where you'll follow our Facebook page for this podcast, but just we pay people to do that. And we treat them like shit. <laughs> also, yeah, did, follow did us you, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Didn't you see that post that they make a uh, a phone case that comes with a warning? Like when you take selfies in the mirror, yeah, uh, it's like yeah, social media, it's like a cigarette. So what does late. it say though? I didn't, I didn't read the whole thing. What does it say? It says it's a joke. I mean, it's oh, just like it's. An I ironic, thought it was serious. No, it's like an ironic. We'll kill attention span. We'll it's make, like social media can cause mental health issues it does. and disorder. I just got to stay off that shit. It's either like politics or like people like trying to make themselves look good. Or I don't think you have to. It not you, but just people in general. It's all about who you follow. It's all about what you want to get out of that social like i'm on twitter that's like my news feed that's like my newspaper like i follow breaking not news but just like it shows i'm trying not to kill myself here you need help man like you want me to do that for you whatever you're doing i I can get up stop talking for one second all right well i'll just carry the load here um Social media, more like anti-social media. Oh, why is this not working? What? Is, what are you doing? This won't go in the. Put it in the hole. Shove it in the hole. Uh, yeah, you can choose. People can choose what to follow. I guess I follow a bunch of stupid shit then. Like I don't follow any of these these pretty people on Instagram. I, f- I follow. Well, I uh, do because I like looking at them half naked. Well, there's Pornhub for that. Yeah, I don't know. They like give you these messages that your phone's infected, and it's just like fake, and they want you to click on, and then that's when your phone gets infected. But it's like I that really takes me out of the mood, like at worrying that my phone's gonna be like frozen on this porn screen. So. All you gotta do is follow Gary V. That's all you need. Just, just fucking check off. That's all you gotta do. Just check off. Just all pull day, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I. It's hurting, Gary. I've been doing it too much. Gary, my hands are here. You know, I can't see. No excuses. Well, you're just going to regret. You're just going to regret not checking it, man. <laughs> said the this, sixth time. Did anybody regret not checking it? I don't know. Probably re- regretted jacking it if they got caught. Probably more so than not. Or not than so. But did you ever, not you, but like, you ever, uh, yeah, you. You ever like, oh, man, I wish I would have jacked it before I went out here. Out where? Yeah, I don't know. Like, just kind of like ease your ease your mind a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I'm a little nervous. I wish I would have pounded one out before. I came. No. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get like so mad you jack it to calm down? <laughs> like, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay, guys. All right. Sorry for yelling. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to go jack it real quick. It's anger management. 101. Think about it, though. Every time you got angry, you just, like, orgasm. Not, like, every, not like automatically, but, like, I think, like, people, people wouldn't be as angry as much. This part I, of the segment. The, the, I'm not proposing anything. This, I'm just this, <laughs> this segment has been brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew? Or the Erection Perfection 5000. Well, that was one of our old sponsors until that guy got, coming back. He got that erection that they, would go away for 20 days. They reintroduced it. They re, they resurrected it. It's the Erection Perfection 7,000. Are they going to give us money? Maybe. 
free pills, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, it won't go away for 20 days. I don't give a shit. Seriously, when they say that, like, you know, if you have an erection lasting longer than four hours. Call a doctor. Well, does that mean, like, you've arrived several times and it won't go away? Or, I think so. Or you won't, like, because, like, just arrive. You well, know yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, if you're actually more than four hours, then you should probably come. <laughs> well, so. And <laughs> another sponsor dropped us. So, oh, man. Our, Evian our bo- producer Evian just Evian bottled fucking punched water. the wall, man. Evian bottled water just dropped us because so, I said the word come. Well, it's a podcast, and it's not, like, rated G. Is it rated G on Apple whatever? No, but my mom listens. That's nice to have a listener. <laughs> well, she can weigh in and, like, uh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's, no. That'll be the end of this. Moms ruin everything. No, that's not fair. What do moms ruin? Trying to be cool, moms embarrass you. And they don't mean to. They just can't help it. Because they still see you as like a little child. It's like, leave me alone, mom. We're talking about our 30-year-old selves? Just in life. Like, drop you off at the concert. Like, okay, you know, have fun. And here's some sandwiches. <laughs> you always be mommy's little boy. I know. At, no matter what age. Ain't that nice, though? Yeah. That's real nice. Yeah. It's better than the opposite. It's better than, than not being here. <laughs> it's not the same thing with your dad, though, is it, though? Not you personally, but like. Your dad's not like, oh, my little boy. It's like, you're a grown-ass man, and I'm going to hit you now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like a person. You're not like this little thing that I got to p- take care of. You're a person, and probably still has to take care of people. They still take care of people. But... I don't have to restrain myself from hitting you now. Yeah, now now it's not the belt. Now it's like a <laughs> punch in the face. Um, the corporal punishment's not in anymore. You, Says who? Well, yeah. Do you I think, beat the shit out of my kids? Oh, well, I'd be oh, careful. I'm just kidding. I'm well, just, uh, yeah, that was a she, joke. Child services will show up at your I'm house. Just kidding. Do you think they should beat kids still? And back in the old no. days, in my grandfather's days, like strangers would beat you, and then your parents would be like, "That's fine, thank you." Well, you do something wrong in the street, some guy. My just... hand was hurting from last night, so thank you for, <laughs> for stepping in. How you doing there, Mitch? I just beat the fuck out of your kid. Uh, oh, hey, thank you, Paulie. What do you do? Yeah, I was just throwing stones. I just socked him a couple times. What, hey. is, what are you socking you for? You made him suck you. Now I'm going to suck you. I mean, no wonder there's a bunch of maladjusted fucking people. <laughs> Especially in Boston or wherever. Uh, you're just... to... I was trying to do Chicago, like in my grandfather's generation. Oh. Where the cop would grab you and kick you in the ass and send you down the street. I, mean, I had someone tell me that. They'd grab you and be like, get out of here, you little fucking. Or, you know, they probably wouldn't say fuck, but the people didn't curse back then. And he'd kick you in the ass. Now it's like you whip out your fucking camera and you're like, yeah, why am I being recording you? Why am I recording you? <laughs> yeah, you're dude. on camera. No way a cop could do that now. Like kick some kid no. in the ass or hit some kid. That doesn't mean they won't. I'll probably shoot them or something. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> what are you say? It's not that bonus. What bonus? Nothing. What are you going to say? Change the subject. Just say it and then cut it out if you don't want to say it. I want to know what you're going to say. No. <laughs> why? Because I don't want to edit this. Just just say, like, two words. What were you going to say? Eminem. Eminem, the oh, rapper? That was the first word that came to mind. What about him? I don't know. The song stuck in my head because we were talking about moms, and mom spaghetti came to mind. Came to mind. Dude, he hated his fucking mom. I don't think that was very healthy. No. His mom had... She was a... I don't know. She had Munchausen syndrome. Or she she like, was portrayed as a, as a, as a bitch. But I'm just saying, like, even, like, talking about killing his mom and stuff, it's pretty fucked up when you think about it. I want to know her side of the story. He was probably a little shit, too. She did some version. She did some rap. She was on some rap, some Missouri rap group. She was on some some song, and she did some verse. It was just kind of, like, sad. You could tell she was just, like, wanted the money. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have Eminem's mom on. Oh, fuck. Have you seen his daughter, though? You want to feel old. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Haley Jade. She's like, it sounds like a stripper name. Yeah. She, Eminem sucks, man. He was so cool when we were a kid. He'd talk about killing his mom and his wife. <laughs> a whole bunch of homophobic slurs. Hero. He's my hero. Yeah. Dyed blonde hair. Made his own movie. Now he's like irrelevant, I think. Yeah, he came out with an album, didn't he? But just didn't. Well, he did a thing on BET where he did like a freestyle Trump diss. And that got a lot of press. And then he came out with like an album. And then he came out with another album. 
and it came out with two like back to back years. But I don't think they were critically re- maybe cr- one was critically received because one was like a diss album. But I don't think like mainstream wise any like real airplay. I remember playing a couple of his songs and they're pretty much they're crazy like fuck 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 you know. I feel sorry for anybody who was super famous in music in the we'll say 2000s because they're still because they're still semi-relevant mm-hmm. and the the game has completely changed yeah no one no one wants Eminem's bullshit anymore and i don't know if it's a technology thing or just an age thing both just with so much content and so you know not only that but just the music in general like it's not streamlined anymore so there's just you can listen to anything whenever you want you can listen to anything at any time whenever you want yeah you'd have to uh record a song off the radio in the old days you have to her- actually uh get the guy to play your song which they don't do by the way but can you but but you can say you can say the same thing about like 80s rock stars trying to make a comeback in the 90s none of them really were really successful doing that except you two <clears throat> they were pretty successful in the 2000s ozzy yeah, Ozzy yeah. lasted, but he had a big career behind him. But yeah, you had that uh, that hair metal genre, Poison, and the guy's still famous now, Brett Michaels. But then grunge took over. Then, like new metal took over, so like all that like hair band shit. I mean, people were st- are still in the Motley Crew, and but there's a lot of those bands that weren't of that stature that were fucked. <laughs> Because you basically were a fat. <laughs> but Motley Crue didn't come out with like like bands like Motley Crue and Motley Crue. They, Talk about they lesser just, bands. They like, just did the same thing, though. They right. didn't evolve. They didn't change. It's like, here we are. We're Motley Crue. Well, you knew what you were going to get. You knew what you were going to get. Yeah. But like other bands evolved for better or for worse. Okay, well then, but like look at Motley Crue, though. They've had a consistent career. Like you, you, could, you could make the same argument about... Uh, about the Foo Fighters, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be the same yeah. straight-ahead rock show, and he's been... I mean, is there something to be said by that, or is it like Metallica, they do something different, everyone loses their fucking minds. Right. And the album tanks, or they get a bunch of hate for it. Remember you probably th- had to dip at some point. What do you mean? Like, it, for the innovative artists. Like, you probably... You were you hit your peak, then you dipped, you did something experimental or a genre-changing, and then you had to reinvent yourself again either come back to what you were or just completely reinvent yourself to try to do something that's stuck. I would say uh, Korn would be a good example. I don't think Korn returned in my point of view. Not in your world, but I mean, in the rock world, they're still like one of the biggest, I mean, that's, and you can say whatever that means for rock, but they're still one of the biggest out there. I mean, their heyday was late 90s, early 2000s, but they've consistently maintained in one of the top spots in the rock world, and they have changed their sound many, many times. I couldn't name, I couldn't tell you a corn song in the last 10 years. Twisted Transistor? Okay, that's the last one. Uh, I bet I could name more. I'm not going to play that I game. I know, you, you can, but... You're not into that kind of music, though. If you're that's in, my point. If it, you're if you're in the hard rock, but that's, that's just an example. That's my, that's my niche. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just that's just my example though. Is they they've done dubstep, they've done covers, they've done a bunch of different stuff. They've done like weird alternative kind of album, not really alternative, but then they've done straight ahead like crazy shit again. It's not their fault, but I feel like they're trapped in that because I feel like every new album, the yeah. press is like, oh, this is re- the return of corn. Oh, they do that with every band. Ex- yeah. Every album is going to be every the hardest album, one ever. It's, Everyone, yeah. it's the best one ever too. Yeah. It's like release your tenth one. This is your best one. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a like someone like Motorhead or Megadeth. Like, those are like really hard rock bands, but they give you the same thing every time. Yeah. They never ever change. I think Megadeth did like one kind of alternative album, but Slayer, too. I mean, whatever you feel about Slayer, they're one of the greatest, uh, big four, one of the greatest heavy metal bands of all time. Every album's pretty much the same. You know, you're going to get. Da, 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 da. But, but, but. That's what you like. That's what you like. But you're not going to reinvent the wheel. Eventually, you're going to make albums that people aren't going to care about. That's, I think, what happens. I mean, Megadeth has an album out. Does anybody give a shit? No. Slayer has an album out. Does anybody give a shit? 
Yeah. Their fans will, but that's that's not like enough, I don't think. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But Foo Fighters put out an album that people give a shit. Yes. They're still relevant. I'm saying that what's the difference? The good m- music's good? The, or the, the, the crowd? A, a, the a, audience? A. Is, you know? Because you're just basically Slayer and Megadeth audience. It's either age little. or how, how much label support you have, and that equals radio play. I don't think metal has much support anymore. But, like, if Metallica comes out with an album, at least one of their songs is going to be on the radio. No matter what. Not, But you can't say the same about Slayer. Same thing with Tool. No matter what, yeah. they're going to play a ten minute song. You can't say the same say the same about Slayer. I don't think they or... ever were on the radio though. I don't think they ever had a radio song. Right, right. That, that's that's the difference. I get what you're saying. Relativity in the current scene. But look about look 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 at like other bands that are so drastically different. Like Beck will create a, a new album every time, like completely different. And he's like considered probably one of the greatest people of our time, or music is musicians of our time. David Bowie was like that. He was never consistent. And I don't mean quality wise, I mean sound wise. There's always something different. Neil Young is another example. He'd always change it up. But I don't know. Is being consistent better than being artistic? I mean, you see. It depends what foundation you, you built before. You see a Seth Rogen heyday. movie or an Adam Sandler movie, you know what you're going to get. That's not true. You don't? No. You don't see an Adam Sandler comedy. You don't know this is going to be some... a comedy. Yeah, but sometimes he does serious. Good point. I, I meant like a little, like like a Seth Rogen. Yeah. Ha ha ha! Like you know, it's what kind of movie it's going to be. He writes like serious stuff too, doesn't he? Yes. He, he uh, might not start. He know. does a he does preacher. He 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 writes and directs. Yeah, preacher. him and Goldberg. Yeah, Evan Goldberg. They do a lot of stuff. They do a lot of stuff. But okay, okay. Let me try to think of a different example. Uh, like Will Ferrell. You know what kind of movie it's going to be. He's done a couple series. Ah, oh, dude, you're sp- <laughs> you get what I'm saying though. Like you, you, you learn to expect certain things. Yes, people will branch off and do serious stuff, or do that weird album, or do that artsy album, or whatever. But you come to know what to expect. Like this two album, I don't know what to expect. When you listen to weird, Al, when you listen to Weird Al, you know what to expect. No, I don't. He changes it every time. He, he does. No, I'm just fucking with you. That's no, that's what I'm that's, saying. That's that's one artist. He's great. Like I, if, if if you go to an icp show <laughs> or buy an icp album you're gonna the last icp album shit they're still putting shit out dude. really yeah I are don't... they still doing the cards no that's done no. and i don't know what happened but it's that like, i guess it was okay whatever because it was like supposed to be the end of the world <laughs> but like, i guess it's okay but if you go to one of their shows guar you're gonna know what you're gonna get you get some like cartoon shit rob zombie you know what you're gonna get pearl jam no They've changed their sound so many times. You're gonna get a three a three hour boring, concert, boring ass concert. Oh, uh, I saw one of the best concerts I saw was Pearl Jam. I the, love Pearl Jam. It was the greatest hit set though. I've seen them where they play like their whole album and then they play like four hits at the end. I love Pearl Jam, but I don't know. I don't like Eddie. He's. I used to love Eddie, and I don't not like Eddie. He's just like I'm this guy who smokes cigarettes. I'm cool. I don't know. Just him and Bill Murray at the Cubs, like World Series. And I don't hate the Cubs. You obviously know i am got more Chicago in me than St. Louis. But him and John Cusack, it's like, God, how do you get those tickets? To like, you know, you're like, hey, Cusack. Hey, Jenny Vetter. <laughs> hey, Murray. Hey, hey, you going to swing off that beer, Murray. I mean, he when I when I knew him, he was a rock star. When I knew him. When he came up, he was a rock star. He said, fuck Ticketmaster, we're not touring. Fuck MTV, we're not doing videos. Now, 20 years later, he's sitting with Bill Murray and John Cusack in some exclusive boxes. That's, that's, that's live. That's live, though. That's live. What's the quote from The Dark Knight? Hey, you either die. Are you the Joker? <laughs> Why so serious? Why are the drugs goring? No, you either you either die a hero or live long enough to be the villain. Oh, that's something great. like that. Such a great line. That's a great it's true though. It might be the best line ever written in, in cinematic history. One of. Again, in our other and I, previous I, butch- shows I butchered it, it but I, I paraphrased it. Yeah. It's true. It is true. Because people change. Things change. Oh, well, there's so many people that I like worshipped when I was like younger in my early twenties. I thought we were like cool and I think fucking stupid. You know who will be forever cool the fonz bill hicks ah, yeah because he died yeah you think like, he'd be, you think he'd be cool now he'd probably be losing no, his shit right now po- that's he'd probably I'm be saying. arrested right now. that's what i'm saying 
Oh, I remember listening to his album years ago, and it was when Bush was in power. I'm like, God, dude, like the first like, Bush. Well, it was, it was it was he was already dead. It, it was it was we recorded it in front of it was one of the albums you gave me or re- recorded for me legally, of course. And uh, I bought his CDs, I think. Right, yeah, I have them. Yeah, I have. Them. Well, I borrowed one. It wasn't illegally recorded or anything. And uh, I just remember going, man, if he was alive right now with Bush with Bush Junior, like with Iraq War, like. He'd be like losing his shit, and then just like now, it'd be like he'd be dead. He would have died. <laughs> he would have like killed over. <laughs> or George Carlin. Now George Carlin, he stayed cool his whole life, pretty much. He yeah. stu- he stuck to the cause. There's pretty much not many people that you could say stayed cool like that. You're he right. stuck to the cause to the very end. I can't think of many people that are le- that legit that are that straight up. What well, Louis Black? I, I don't know. Like, I don't know much about him. I find he's funny. He, I, I feel like his he's not as funny. I know? enjoy him. He, he just still kinda, does that. He, he, but yeah, but, it's one. It's like a one trick pony, though. Yeah. Like you yell. Like I saw a Family Guy. It's like I had a dream that Louis Black had jokes that were so funny you had to shout them at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bet if I went to one of his shows, I'd laugh my ass off. But he is he le- somewhere, somewhere? Is he close. is he like legit? Like just a legit angry man? Does he eat Chick Chick Fil A? I mean, does he? Does he like hang out with bankers? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, legit is like torpedoing your career because of what you believe in versus like trying to be famous. And that's what Pearl Jam pretty much did. They like ruined their mainstream career. Pretty much. It only like came back relevant like in the past 10 years. Probably when I, they played Lollapalooza in 07 was probably like their triumphant like mainstream where we're famous again return isn't that when someone died not them a uh, no. uh, concert goer there was a story like that well they wrote a whole album based or a theme based upon that like they wrote a song I mean, and they, mentioned they've it. done some cool shit man they did an album with neil young i mean they did they had that i don't know whatever i don't mean to shit i mean now i don't mean to shit on eddie better but i guess we all could be so fortunate to become the villain right <laughs> Is Pearl Jam the next, like, our, our generation's U2? I hope not. Like, what does that mean? Like, like, um, they're still relevant, but, like, their cause, like, they were so cool back in the day and rebellious and whatever, but now they're just not. But they still try to act like they are. A lot of people don't realize U2 was rebellious I and know. badass. And I know he's, like, an activist, but it just changed. It went from I I, I turned on you two. You turned on you two. I hate them. I had tickets to see Octung, not Octung Baby, the Joshua Tree from beginning to end. We had some civil unrest in the city, and they backed out. And he just posted some cliche thing from Martin Luther King. It's like you fucking pussy. Yeah. All these people going to your concert would be on the side of the unrest. Of the protest, did they come back? They came back, but they had a new album, and I even like wrote in some comment section, like, "Who gives a fuck? I don't give a fuck about your new album. Like, I'll, I'll never fucking go to your show again because you fucking didn't redeem the Joshua Tree." I'm butchering like what I was probably in, in an uh, illiterate thing I wrote. You think you read that and like a tear came from? Well, someone attacked that? me and go, "Oh, they'll play old songs too. We think they're just gonna play new stuff." And I'm like, "Uh, are they gonna play the Joshua Tree from beginning to end?" You fuck off. Go pay. Go spend three hundred dollars on fucking tickets. Like, go ahead. Have some big like, yeah, 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 yeah. Vertigo. I mean, <laughs> nailed it. O- Octung Baby, Joshua Tree. Those are fucking hardcore albums. But then, like, they, think of the but yeah, then they became yeah. they became like family friendly. I think that was what I had in mind with like the reinvention. And Pearl Jam will be family friendly again. Mm, no, I don't think so. Or they've tried at least. Like they came out with like lightning bolt. That was good. I liked that though. I, yeah, I, I think I like that was their like comeback. Mm-hmm. But now, especially with the day and age and how music is, I'm not saying they'll never do another album. But oh, they will. I mean, they they get they get good crowds. They got like it's they got like a following like the Dead does. They got yeah. people that go to all their shows. Well, then they don't shit. need to make an album. They just need a tour. 
And then when they play, they play mostly obscure shit, from what I understand. That's fine. I've only seen them twice, and one was a festival setting, so they did play all their hits. I saw them, the last time I saw them, it was off, like, the new album at the time, and I love that new album. And so it was a well, great... Did you, did you go with me? Was it, uh... Was it the one with, like, Love is a Tower on it? Yeah. I yeah, we went to one. it. Yeah. I think I went with you. Okay. And they basically played that whole album, and then, like... Rearview Mirror and a couple like other hits, but they basically play the whole. But it was a great concert. Oh, it was fucking amazing. It was a great. I have no complaints. I was just kind of like, God damn it, they don't play Jeremy. But then when I saw the Lollapalooza, man, it was boom, boom, like every song you ever wanted to hear, but Jeremy. And uh, because I remember telling my brother, like, dude, you're gonna be pissed. Like they're gonna, it's just gonna be shit. Like only for a hardcore fan, you know. And by the third song, he looked at me and and I'm like, okay, okay. (laughs) Like, (laughs) has your brother ever seen Muse yet? I know he used to hate Muse back in the day. Well, at that same uh, same festival, he uh, we went to watch some of Muse, and he was like, fuck this shit. They fucking sound like Radiohead. And then we're walking to see Interpol on the other side of the park. He's still, like, saying shit. And some guy's like, what are you saying? I'm like, oh, no. And he says what he says. He's like, fuck Muse. They sound like Radiohead. And the guy's like, yeah, you're right. Fuck Muse. <laughs> Radiohead is so lame. Well, okay, so I saw Radiohead, not to get some Lollapalooza fucking thing, but I saw them, and then I saw them in, like, 09. The concert changed my life. And then I saw them in 14, fucking bored. Like, I guess they, they're, they're like Trent, where they have a bunch of shit they release on their we're own. They're going to do whatever the hell we yeah. want up here. So, like, their last five songs were, like, the only songs I gave a shit about. I know I sound, oh, you're not a real fan. All you care about is the radio hits. What's well, like, I haven't been buying their self-release shit and most people haven't and most people weren't like into it but then i noticed at that festival no one was into any of the music it was all about this guess what muse is doing right now rolling in money fucking number one selling out these huge soccer stadiums in france and paris so is radio france and paris so is radiohead they don't have a number one album they have a number one album right now slipknot's got a number one album back. not right not this current right, buddy in the last year or two. Radiohead hasn't like released an album to be charted probably. Like they're like Trent, they release yeah. their own shit. Yeah, Muse is still legit, I guess is what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. No, I liked uh, the last album Muse put out. Like I liked it. I like Muse. I don't have a problem with Muse. And this is again, this is like 10 years ago. I'll tell your brother fuck off. Oh, his opinion might change. I, I mean, <laughs> it'll never change. It pissed me off when he said it 50 well, however, not 15, 10 years I ago. I remember. I I mean I saw him. That's I just like, a, that's just a dumb it's a dumb comparison. Well, it's just, I don't like a band because they sound like another. Like the singing sounds like another band, but the music's completely different. Uh, I don't know. The music is completely different. Oh yeah, yeah. <sighs> I don't have he's a problem. He's a better singer than Tom. Yeah, he's a, yeah, for sure. Well, he's not an asshole. Tom's a fucking asshole, dude. He's a pretentious prick. Yeah. Like, he came uh, by himself. He did a solo thing. He came to the Stifle or whatever the fuck it's called now. Yeah. Like, have seizures on stage. Oh, my God. The tickets were, like, way too expensive to justify just seeing him do his own little personal shit. I used to love people, bands that were like that. But now, it's like, you're fucking pretentious as shit. And I'm glad. Because that's how I felt about Tool. Until I just saw them. Like thinking back, I'm like, they're so fucking per- like you're just gonna stand up there, yeah, not I move, a lot, not, yeah. not talk. You're boring, yeah. I'm paying a lot of money to see you to see your videos, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I feel like when we saw them, they got into it, all of them. Maybe not Adam, but like the bass player is just rocking his nuts off, and Maynard actually like talked and joked and. So I was going into it, I'm like, I don't, don't think I'm going to like this because I'm not into this pretentious, I'm just going to stand here. I was and... kind of jaded about it, too, but I liked it. I liked it when I saw him the, the few years before, too, which was just basically a money grab tour. I thought you said you didn't like it. Cause I, I, didn't cause... Like the, what, I didn't like being around all these idiot people. They did a good job. That's, it probably, made why, me, that, it opened... that's probably why they way they are, because they don't, like the, they don't like that crowd either. They don't. Maynard hates his fans. But... Tool did a good job, and that's what opened my eyes because I read some article about how Tool fans think they're like these artsy people, but they're just like trashy fucking frat boys. And when I went to that concert, maybe it was that article, but I'm just like, yeah, these are fucking garbage people. Like, they don't, they act like, oh, yeah, I'm so sophisticated. It's like, no, you're not. You're a piece of shit. 
I quit smoking cigarettes, quit smoking weed. Like, and I, I'm not against weed. I've got to, like, say that. But, like, dude, you're, like, on your 10th joint, man. Like, it's to a point where, like, you're being a dick about it. We're going to lose our cannabis sponsor if you stop talking, if you don't stop talking shit about weed. Who, that guy that sells to us? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to lose him in January anyway. <laughs> We're going to buy from Pritzker. 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 This is turned into one long bonus episode. Yeah, we we're supposed to do like fake commercials and stuff. That's oh, gonna be the title of this episode. Fake, we we're supposed to do fake commercials. This was supposed to be a bonus episode, but it turned into a legit episode that now I have to edit. Thanks. More work for Jerry. Not that you don't have enough to do. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe you should get a life coach. <laughs> Cut that out. Cut that out with my brother too. I don't want him listening, and getting pissed off. Fuck your brother. No, seriously. No, like, I'm just kidding. I love your brother. He might get pissed though. He, I don't care. I'll fight him. Tell him why does it come to that? He can probably take me. He's not gonna. He is pretty like buff now. Yeah, let's cut that out too. I don't want that in there. (laughs) He could probably take me. He take me probably easily beat the fuck out of me. What if we double team? You think he could? He could take both of us. Nothing hurts your pride more than having like a younger sibling like hand you your ass. (laughs) So that's just. Could Sean take you? That's a good question. I was say we find out. It depends. It depends. You do it, it for charity. It depends if. It depends if what? If you, you guys are angry enough? Yeah. Or why? Or why? Like if I'm mad for a reason? Yeah, because you go. Probably weak. not. You go. You go like. Uh, you like black out. I, I, I have yeah. black out. Yeah. I haven't in a long time. That's good. It's yeah, not that, that animal <laughs> has been has been dormant for a long You've time. You've been coming a lot though, right? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you been coming on a regular basis? Uh, <laughs> but if he was mad about something, he's just like you, right? No, he's not. He's the opposite. He's peaceful. He's, as far as I can tell, I have no, I, I don't know. I've seen you get angry. I haven't seen him as an adult, so he's not like, uh, you, you, I mean, I lose it too. I'm no, I'm no saint. I, I guess both of our brothers are probably better, <laughs> better off than us as far as like anger wise, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you need to be angry a little bit. Well, there's being angry, and then there's being stupid. Right. And then there's, I'm not going to be angry. Like punching glass, like mirrors. That's stupid. When did that happen? Never. I'm just saying sometimes angry. There's a difference between being angry and being stupid. Yes. Like stupid angry is like punching a fucking hole in the wall and breaking your wrist. Or just like, okay, so you're like angry with somebody. That doesn't give you like the right to like assault them. Depends what they did. Well, you angry. People who fight all the time, like, you're an idiot. Right. Like, we're 30-something. I mean, you fight to defend yourself, or you fight in a life life or death situation. There's still people at these good old boy bars that are like, you disrespect me. It's like, what do you prove, man? Eventually, like, someone's going to fuck you up really bad. Yeah. And it's like, how bad does your life suck where, like, you can't settle, like, normal, like, uh, disagreements without, like, fighting people? I got in a fight this year. I got... Uh, Kicked out, kicked out, kicked out of a bar. The bouncer tried to drop me. You was your fight. You're, you yeah. You talk about that. So, yeah. so, uh, do you think you were stupid angry at the time? Why don't you tell no. the story real quick? It, no, I was. Well, t- tell the story how you got out of line at a bar. <laughs> I feel like it was justified until I heard like. So I was sticking up for my brother, pretty much. But okay, th- so there was a lot. There was a lot. There your was, peaceful brother. I'm not telling this whole story. Your, your peaceful brother. Oh, yeah, because cops and stuff. My <laughs> brother's. Girlfriend's mom got disrespected. Mm-hmm. So it was oh, her. oh, the what are you doing? My brother's girlfriend got disrespected. Then I got disrespected. I got thrown out of a bar. And that wasn't even it. Then I see my brother get thrown out. And like, that was it. That's when I went bl- I blacked out. Uh, but then I learned the reason why he got kicked out. It's like, oh, you probably should have been kicked out. <laughs> but that's family, though. You just yeah. you, you blindly defend family, yeah. even if they're in the wrong. Unless I, if I would have known. <laughs> You would have maybe chilled out a little yeah, bit. Like, yeah, you kind of deserve being <laughs> kicked out. I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last fight I got into. I can't remember. This segment's being sponsored by... Um, fight Milk. Joe, Joe's Gold Sack Gym. Come down and be Jim's Gold Sack. <laughs> 
that's the thing is like you don't know who you're fighting if you're fighting a stranger yeah. it could be some jim's gold sack black belt guy <laughs> who smacks you with his sack it could be like some marine i mean hey buddy he just bumped into me and the next thing you know your arms are snapped in half and you're <laughs> you're like oh you know uh, as angry as as, <laughs> as as much rage and anger i have I do not like the fight. Live the fight another day. Like I do not run like away. The fight. It has to be like a very like life you, or death. Like you slap my wife, or you yeah, like life or death. Yeah, or that's life or death to me. my kids. I mean, I'll run my mouth. I'll yeah. run my mouth for anything. But life or death. I don't want to fight because you just never know. You got to be careful running your mouth because some people might oh, take, take you up on it. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes that could get me in trouble. But. I usually try to stand my ground if I don't like what's going on. Is like this ain't happening, and then. Whatever happens after that, I basically go on, like, how is this going to escalate? Like, if someone's pissing me off, I'll be like, you know, fucking stop. I'll be, like, dead serious about it. And either they'll stop or they won't, and then I don't know what I have to make go from there. Whether I seek assistance or check their ass. Then again, like, I don't know. Am I scary or something? Do I look scary? People seem scared of me. Like my, 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 I mean, you're not you're not scared of me, but like these people just like seem scared of me. Like I'm, I'm not I can't, I'm not that big. I'm not that scary. I don't know. People I mean, think I'm kind of scary too. Well, I like it. Like don't I am scared. You don't know. Like I, I, woo. <laughs> I don't know. I think. Uh, do you think I don't know? Do you think people who like fight fight smaller people versus bigger people, or do you think people like they don't discriminate? Like, I'm just saying, like, okay, so, like, I'm not a bar guy. I, I rarely go out, out, like, to bars. That's, I mean, I do, but it's not like, you know, have my hometown bar. You're my, not a local. You're not a local yokel. Hey, Matt. I don't hang out with the same people that I did in high school, except, I guess, you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, like, I don't, like, live in high school, but I, there's nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't, that just wasn't for me. But I, I, I do go to, the, like, the bars and shit, but do you think people who, like, pick fights and stuff, they do it because like they're just fucked up and they don't discriminate or do you think like hey i think i can take this guy and you know you know what i mean depends like, how drunk they are so you think like you're a shit face you're gonna take out like some shaquille O'Neal guy <laughs> no Probably. way yeah. no way yeah. i would don't care how drunk i am i'd be like oh i'm sorry <laughs> that guy could like crush me with his hand like my skull like mike myers like i'm not a fighter <laughs> I'm just saying, like, these tough guys, they go, okay, I'm taller than this guy, and he bumped into me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, I'm angry. I hate my life. I'm going to take it out on you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then that guy's a Marine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just live by the sword, die by the sword. You can't win every fight. And when you're growing up, it's called assault. And you go to jail for it. Yeah. You don't get sent to the principal's office. Did your parents encourage you to fight? No. Like stand up to bullies and stuff. Mm, I never had. I never. I don't think I ever got an advice from that. I didn't seek that advice either. I think it was just. I don't know. I can't remember. I didn't take kindly to that very well, as you remember. Remember being right. freshmen and se certain seniors. Oh. Trying to act like they were somebody when they're just some pussy ass Waterloo. You know. You said the town name. I uh, believe that. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm kidding. Uh, I hope I run into him again. I mean, I got kicked out of band for like fucking throwing a senior against a fucking uh, uh, bus because he was trying to like flex on some freshman. So what? That. So what does he do? Does he kick my ass? No, he cries like a little bitch to the f huh. Oh yeah. And this guy fucked with me. He like targeted me. Like he tried to like pick on me. And I fucking finally stand up to him, and I get kicked out of the fucking band, and I got to meet with this old squinty eyes. <laughs> Mr. Look at your fucking belt to see if your shirt's tucked in. And it's just like, I'm a goddamn freshman. Like, this is why I don't get this. Squinty eyes. <laughs> <laughs> shrivel up nutsack face. <laughs> no, but even, like, on the soccer field and the basketball, people try to be like, hey, freshman. And I'd be like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably why I didn't do very well. But I think I got some respect out of it. I mean, people didn't fuck with me after a while. But other people like like yes sir yes sir yes sir like wear this Burger King hat I don't fucking wearing it like okay <laughs> did I wear it I, mean, I think I think you did I had an earring and I remember like some guy coming up to me I'm not gonna say his name I had an earring too and he was like take that earring out f word for gay people whatever because yeah. everyone said that back then because it was okay yeah and uh, 
I like pushed him into the fucking soda machine. <laughs> and he like hated me and like like was out to get me, but like never did shit to me. So should I have taken it and then been like one of the guys? I don't think it was. I don't think that was the direction it was going. <laughs> or did I just like fucking snapped on all these people? Yeah, I remember that now. But here I am now. So <laughs> <laughs> again, those were pussy ass kids. If I was like at a different school. Some of those people would have fucking killed me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you I mean? You would have worn the Burger King hat. I would have worn it in, in a fucking hospital. <laughs> 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 I mean, shit, some of this hazing, they, they fucking sodomize you and stuff. They just wanted you what? to wear hazing, hazing. They sodomize you? No, some of this hazing stuff you read. People get sodomized. They get they have to do like humiliating stuff. Oh, okay. Like I know a guy who had to dress in drag who was on a soccer team and like run around and do like embarrassing stuff. We just had to wear a hat. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much, man. I'm not gonna be disrespected. <laughs> just wear the damn hat. Just wear the hat, man. Sometimes in life you just have to wear the hat. Have you seen Euphoria? How much of Euphoria have you watched? I haven't I'm given a... up on it? No. I'll just tell you. I've been busy, man. There's a scene where someone's having sex with someone. I know, shocker, right? And I won't watch it anymore. They get hazed, like they run it. They run in while the dudes having sex, and they have masks on, and they pull them off, and they're like, "Fuck me, fuck me," like. And then the dude like goes into the the bathroom and like kind of has a breakdown, and the girl's like, "That was fucked up." He's like, "It's okay, it's okay." Like all we had to do was wear the hat. Dude, I don't that that it's like that's like traumatizing what they did. Like and then like to be able to like go on after that. Like you tried to go on after that and finish the job. It's like <laughs> now I got to watch it. I got to keep watching it. How far have you gone with a f- euphoria? I Is it a say, stu- I thought you're going to say with a girl. Uh, I'm assuming far since you have kids. <laughs> uh you can artificially make kids. At least second base. I don't even know what the bases are. I never, I never got a clear uh, instruction booklet on what the bases were. First base is like kissing. Second base is like titty grabbing. Third base is like oral. Fourth base is sex, and then a bunt is anal. Oh, I'm just making. <laughs> I got the first base. No, I, I would say that in, in, in struck in, out. No, I would say an inside the park home run is anal. Yeah. You been to the ballpark lately? Cardinal games? Yeah, it was last night. You were? Mm-hmm. Was it nice? No, that's yeah, okay. I mean, it rained. Oh, storm, boo! So we had to leave early. And... Do you have the kids? No. Oh, nice. Sorry, I didn't mean anti-kid. They can make things more complicated. Yeah. So, what were we talking about? Anal sex. Oh yeah. <laughs> so there I was. So there I was in the prison shower. <laughs> <laughs> So there I was, supposed to get a prostate exam, but boy, was there some confusion. <laughs> this segment's brought to you by Dr. Simmons, proctology. Buy one rectal exam, get the second one on the house. Some people take the road less traveled. He takes the one up your ass. <laughs> he, best proctologist in town, actually. That other proctologist, he's a fucking hack. Like, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground. And that's bad for a proctologist. This guy, what's his name? Shit. The guy gave us the bag of cash. Dr. Simmons. Yeah, man. Like, he'll make you think you're not getting a prostate exam. And then, boom, you get one. And, like, some people might be like, that was weird. But it's like, you're, like, relaxed. Because you go in there going, oh, man, I'm going to get a prostate exam. I'm pissing a lot in the middle of the night, and I don't want to bring it up because then he's going to give me a prostate exam. But you can bring it up, and he won't tell anybody. And he won't tell anybody what happens after that. <laughs> I got one, dude. It sucks. Well, it doesn't suck. I got real uptight about it, though. I was like, oh, God, I don't want this to happen. Then, again, I thought it wasn't going to happen. Like, okay, bye. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Did you have Dr. Simmons? I will now. Well, that's why... That's, that's why uh... He's sponsoring the podcast. Well, um, Dr. Simmons, he may have a hook as a hand. 
but he uses his hand, his real hand. <laughs> See? So he uses the hook to like hold on. Yeah. I mean, he gets in deep, so yeah, he hooks onto the wall. He has like so he's little, not going anywhere. No, so he doesn't fall. <laughs> or, or does he have a bar up here that he just like hooks on like at a subway? You know, I haven't been there yet. I'm still like, he doesn't take my health insurance. You said you got a, a, a rectal exam. It wasn't from him. It wasn't oh. a rectal exam. It was a prostate exam. I guess it's the same thing. I don't know. It was in a van somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the read says? Uh, Are you going uh, off the read? This is written in crayon, so <laughs> this guy gave it to us. We gotta... <laughs> He's going to pull his cash out. He ain't getting the cash back. He'll be giving rectal exams with a broken hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll finish that read up. All right, Dr. Visit, this... do- visit Dr. Simmons at um, drsimmonsloveseuranus.com. Well, here's the thing. like, oh, you know, Women got gynecologists and stuff. We all know what happens there. Right. Do tell. Well, just kidding. Through the hole in the wall that I was watching. <laughs> well, no, but it's like, oh, guys got it easy. They just cup your balls and shit. And, you know, and women, they, it's more intrusive. Prostate exam. It's pretty intrusive. It's an invasion. Yeah, but usually, not everybody. Usually, that doesn't happen until your middle age. I just ran you them. Get, I, I, when you're female, you got to get checked out from like 15, 16 on. For the rest of your life, who like both gynecologists and proctologists? Like we talked about the the whole like follow your dreams. Who's like I want to work with assholes? I can understand wanting to work with vaginas, but then like obviously it might not be cool all the time. It might, it might be actually a horrible situation, especially like the type of vaginas you see. Yeah, of like, all ages, all you, shapes, sizes. I mean, you can see a young vagina, you can see an old vagina, you can see a nice vagina, you can see a mean vagina. I mean, you love what you do. You never work a day in your life. The guy gets up, the proctologist, he's like whistling. He's like, ah, have a good day. I will. (laughs) Those guys, we laugh, but they have more money than we'll ever have. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to shove my hand up someone's ass. Do you think the, um, I won't say spouse without saying wife, but like, do you think Let's say you're the wife of a of of I don't want to say Dr. Simmons because he's paying us good money. So we'll say his um his competition is is Dr. Goldman. That's the guy. He's a hack. So let's say Dr. Goldman's wife, like when he watches, his name's um Steve. Mm-hmm. So when she watch. So when she watches Steve like make like burgers or salad, and like he's just he's just getting in there. Like, do you think she thinks like? Man, the finger. Those well, fingers. Supposed just, to wear a glove. They, still. I know. The thought just in the back of your head, like as he prepares your meal for that evening. Well, he's not. Dr. Simmons ain't making the meal. So he probably has like some made. We're not talking about Dr. Simmons. We're talk, t- talking about Dr. Goldman. Fuck. I just we fucked cannot, up. <laughs> we cannot talk bad about Dr. Simmons. Well, fine. If you were a proctologist, would you make your own meals? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Would you eat a meal made by a proctologist? <laughs> That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm. Well, his uh, wife might, but would you? That's a good question. What about a gynecologist? And again, with the wife. Like, I wonder if you saw a better one than mine today. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, or a female doctor who gives physicals. Like, did you see a big schlong today? Was it it's bigger than mine? No, no. Was it? No one's is, which is a lie. Because there's always someone bigger. <laughs> I told you, honey, I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> That's a great podcast. In- interviews from the... You hear that? That's the sponsors lining up. <laughs> My phone's blowing up. Yeah. Since we're, since, we're, since we're doing this live. On location from Dr. Simmons' office. <laughs> we're doing a remote podcast, live, a live show. Live from the waiting room. Hey, what's up, buddy? Why is, he, why is that guy so mad? The guy leaving. Oh. He was, he, he was fucking. He was rude, dude. That guy was fucking rude. Do, yeah, Doctor Simmons is hurting for business. So, oh shit, I say that on the on the podcast. <laughs> I shouldn't say that on the podcast, but uh, well, no, no, we're uh, we're boosting. You'll uh, be hurting when you leave, Doctor Simmons. You won't be hurting. Sorry, I'm not reading the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> it was written in crayon. 
I think his kid wrote it. I don't know. He doesn't give a shit, man. Like if he cared, he wouldn't write this in crayon. His kid, his kid is his uh, his social social media manager. He's like ten. He does a good job too. Copywriter, dude. This ten year old kid, man, knows more than I do. I bet he's following Gary V on Instagram. Dude, Gary V strikes again. Told the guy to follow his dream. Wow. It's full circle. Live your dreams. Do you live your dreams if you're if you have nightmares? Huh? What? He says, follow your dreams. What if you? What if they're nightmares? In real life? It's just a metaphor. That your dream really isn't a dream. It's terrible. Like you go life out to Hollywood. Like, to be, like you, this life is an illusion stuff? No, you go out oh. to, you, your goal is to be an actor and you turn, get turned out as a whore or something. Like your dream was a nightmare. You went to be a proctologist. So some guy so went diarrhea on you and you're like, I mean, like you thought it would make you happy, but it didn't. Nightmare. It leads you to a horrible life. Which has you stalking Gary V. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Here, this is what you do, okay? This is what you do. What's your, what's your dream? Son, son, what's your dream? What do you want to be? What do you want to be? Huh? So you only got one life. Huh? Reincarnation is bullshit. You only got one life. What do you want to be? Huh? What do you want to be? Um... Come on, come on, come on. There's other people I got to lie to. YouTube influencer. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Okay. Uh, we're at a university. Just drop out and just do it. Just you put all your energy into it. But I'm in my fourth year. What, what, are you, what are you majoring in? Psychology. Just fucking. Listen. You want to talk to crazy people all day? Or do you want to make videos? Gary, I'm $240,000 in debt. What I'm hearing now is excuses. You can major in psychology, and you could better mankind, and you could help people who are suffering, and you could be a boring loser, a sheep like that, or you could make YouTube videos. Can they be whatever I want? Can I do YouTube videos on whatever I want? It's your life. It's your life. It's your life. It's about you. You do what you want, what you, makes you happy. I don't care your parents pay for this, and they, they, they their house is uh, going to get taken away if you drop out. I don't care you're going to be paying off your loans till you're fucking 50. So even if I have my own podcast and radio show? Yeah. Do whatever you want. Oh, I can't wait to tell my alt-right <laughs> All right, group. I can't you mean wait. My own Thank, Nazi you, Gary. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. I'm gonna start right That's away. That's a good fucking point, man. What if he encourages someone to do like, like, uh, I'm Charles Manson. Like Charles Manson, like, just is born like now. He's like, he's like our age now, and he goes to see Gary V talk. Just follow your dreams. Like, I want to start a cult and start a race war and like kill people in the Hollywood Hills. Well, what are you making excuses for? Live your dream. <laughs> But I'm from West Virginia, and I've been in jail my whole life. Blah, blah, blah. We all have problems, Charlie. <laughs> but I don't even have a high school education. Just get people acid and trick them. Have them fuck each other. They will follow you. I mean, come on. I, you know, loser. <laughs> Here's how you follow your dreams. Get a bunch of money. That's it. That's Gary Vee in a nutshell. End of story. Fuck you, Gary Vee. End of the bonus episode. Gary VJ. You solved life's problems, Matt. You want to know what the secret to losing weight is? Not eating? Well, that's not true either. You know the secret of uh, not doing drugs? Don't do drugs. It's hard, though. It is hard. I, I'm really, really, really struggling with my meth addiction. That's not funny, is it? People have people who like do meth. Remember that skit we did, meth? Oh, yeah. meth. That wasn't funny. No. That wasn't one of my favorites. I didn't like it either. It wasn't, I just, just think things don't turn out that way. They all can't be winners. It wasn't because methamphetamine isn't funny. I mean, it's not funny um, if you have to deal with somebody like that. I lived across the street from some people that cooked meth in Ohio. Yeah, I, I went out of town and they stole my trash can. You lived in Ohio? For like a few months, a Columbus area, some job, some fucking clown boss, sounding like somebody we know. No, seriously, like a, a, a narcissist like 80s hack dj guy that just like fucked with me until like i i quit i don't know why they even hired me 
And I quit. When I quit, I made sure I fucked him over really bad. And then I came to Centralia, and then basically my career was over because Centralia was a joke. <laughs> that company was a joke. Um, but the meth people stole our trash can. And I remember going, I can't let this go. But then it's like, if they're going to steal my trash can, what else would they fucking do? So if you're on meth, you do things like steal your neighbor's trash can and pick holes in your face and get your kids taken away. Maybe they were just making it and selling it. Maybe they thought I left. Maybe they knew that this guy's not going to make it at this radio station. They probably didn't even know existed. (laughs) (laughs) I never felt so alone than I did in that town. And I was with my uh, soon-to-be wife at the time, and it wasn't her fault. We just... It, like it was like you didn't belong it wasn't columbus it was newark but it was like one of those places where like everyone lived there their whole lives but it was like a big town where you think like that shit wouldn't be like it was but i remember i saw like between the buried and me in columbus and i was out like in the smoking lounge like talking to people and like, like where you live i'm like newark's like oh that fucking sucks like it was like a well-known shithole town and it was an ugly town but yeah, man, I, that was really hard for me not to like. It was like I'm, they're picking on me, you know. They it was just because I wasn't from there. And then, I mean, I should have been a real man and walked over there with a machine gun. <laughs> what I should have done, and I regret doing, is that a kid. Is I should have called child services as I like peeled out of there, like to like leave the, to the state. I should have. I don't know. I just wanted to go. It was like you keep seeing like these scary like Nazi like people like pull up and get. Yeah, it was not cool. Uh, cause I stayed there after I quit for like a month trying to like get some job in Columbus and I had a couple interviews, but nothing happened. And then I got this shitty job in Centralia, but I'd be out there and I'd be like, man, don't fuck with those people. <laughs> and then we you going to do call the cops. They stole my trans can. Well, what I did was I cut off service. So like just trash just like piled up, piled up and piled up. <laughs> and I'm like, they better not attack me for cutting off service. <laughs> <laughs> me- me- meth is ruining this 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 world though so i've heard yeah it makes you ejaculate did you know that no <laughs> so i was reading some guy talking about it, it makes you kind of lose your shit hmm. you've seen the faces of meth like the literal faces literal like faces a good looking girl then like a couple years later she's like a hideous monster and is that true? Yeah. Would you see that on the internet? Well, some cops put it up to discourage people from it using mouth. It could be propaganda bullshit. I guess I should use it then because I shouldn't believe everything I see on the internet. They say heroin can kill you. I'm not believing this fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Gary V says to follow my dreams. Well, I want to be a fucking heroin addict. Gary, I want to run the uh, track in the Olympics. Just do it. Just do it. Gary, if you haven't noticed, I'm a paraplegic. Don't make excuses. Follow your dreams. They have Special Olympics. Asshole. Some guy in, is like racing in his wheelchair. <laughs> they can have prosthetics. Right. You don't know this guy. You're right. This guy I just made up. I don't know anything about him. No. You need to know the whole, the whole story. Gary, I want to be... A porn star. Just do it. Just do it. But I have AIDS. I don't care. Quit making excuses. <laughs> I have an inverted penis, Gary. I wear, wear. There's probably a fetish for that. Inverted penises? Yeah. There's I probably don't... a fetish for everything except AIDS. There's probably not a fetish for that. An AIDS fetish? Oh, yeah, there is. Uh. I uh, remember reading a long time ago that there was a, a thing where they like to, uh, gave each other HIV. HIV, though. I know that yeah. turns into AIDS, but they keep, keep it that way. Hmm. It's a little club I don't want to belong to. I read it in Reader's Digest. Hmm. It's in the nineties. Hmm. When the AIDS was a thing. Well, AIDS is a thing now. It's just I, I know. If you but catch it soon, soon enough, it's not a. De- if you catch it soon oh enough. Oh boy, it's, we've hit. Oh, uh, producers had too much to twig. <laughs> we've hit. We've hit the uh, the mark. You trying to end it? Just end it. And what? It's a bonus episode. Well, bonus episodes go for four hours. I can just press stop. We don't have to do it at exit or intro or outro. You're going to end it when I was going to take a shit. I do have to take a piss. Yeah? Mm-hmm. As long as you leave one. <laughs> There's a water sports fetish. People like to pee on people. Yeah. If you met someone that's like, I like to get pissed on, would you like invest in a friendship with them? <laughs> 
I'd have to like know the more about him first. And that's probably not be the first thing I know. <laughs> There's this guy like I didn't work with, but like I knew of him and like he worked at the same place. And I never talked to him. And everyone told me like he was in there like getting tied up and all this weird like bondage shit that like he wanted this girl to like put him in his attic and like tape him up and tie him up and God. and then like when I actually talked to him it's like I'm sorry this guy's ruined like I can't, I can't, like get wrapped up like a mummy and shit yeah yeah well, yeah that sounds like a fun time what are we doing this weekend Dad we're getting wrapped up like a mummy <laughs> go take your piss <laughs> end this shit just fucking do it we have one more read. Why don't you knock it knock it out of the park? I did the last read. Okay. This is uh this is uh for uh, the law office of uh Jacob Tanzinger. Offices located in uh the bathroom of the Taco Bell in uh downtown St. Louis. He will fight for you. Literally, we we're talking about fighting earlier, he will fight for you. He can also represent you in court, but here, this is what he says. Have you been screwed over? Has someone fucked you in the A? Call me, and I'll either show up at their house or I'll go talk to a judge for you. <laughs> I'm in the second stall at the Taco Bell in downtown. Knock twice. I will fight for you. Oh, in my version, it says he's also a, a trained MMA fighter. Oh, I, oh come on. I... I, I well, I guess I shouldn't question our sponsor, but did you see the guy? Yeah. I mean. That's the thing is I'd bump into this guy at the bar and I'd be like, fuck you, you fucking toilet lawyer. And then he'd like fucking break my neck. <laughs> it's a thing. And then and then I try to sue him. He's a lawyer. Wow. It's a one two punch. Dude, literally. this guy's the shit, man. That's literally. why he's a sponsor. He's in a bathroom. Hey, he law you, school is expensive. <laughs> he knocked you out cold, and I started. We started talking, and I told him about the podcast, and he he agreed. What to, I was uh, told is he was beating me, and in order for him not to kill me, that he became a sponsor. <laughs> I was really ripping on him for working in the bathroom. I just someone says I work in a stall. Like you're not gonna. Oh, okay, yeah. You're rent, a lawyer. Rent's expensive. Yeah, he like hangs out at hospitals too. <laughs> he's gonna be pissed that you're not taking his read seriously dude i am taking it seriously i'm saying he's at the taco bell and he's at hospitals like go find him he doesn't have a number <laughs> does he have a does twitter it's... handle <laughs> i will fight at, at, at i'll fight for you at, 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 is that 15 characters i don't know it, might, it seems a little long this is what he has written like, again this needs to be straight now normally there's like a, another like person that would like makes this all right for us yeah, that person got fired last week. Just cause. Don't look at me in the Just eyes. Cause he was an idiot. Don't look at me in the eyes. It's that simple. I told the fucker not to look at me in the eyes, and he did. <laughs> All right. What's his name again? <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know. Something Tanzinger. <laughs> Jacob Tanzinger. Jacob Tanzinger. Yeah. Uh, I got it right. I found it. Attorney at law. Got a. Uh, it doesn't say where he got his law. Do they normally say where they got their law degree from in their thing? Just you gotta say the tagline. He just says like, "I swear to God, I got a law degree." <laughs> That's his tagline. Jacob Tanzinger, I will fight for you. I will fight for you, or talk to a judge for you. <laughs> All right. That's it for the bonus episode. That might be a real episode. I don't know. Ooh. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger.